Our next speaker of the day is Rene, recruitment and active sourcing expert. If you have any questions regarding recruitment, please feel free to ask. I'll just hide myself and let's get started, Rene. Thank you, Dharu. Thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here. I'm just trying not to share, um, I think, four or five slides to get us started. And then we'll take it from there. And of course, I'm also looking forward to your questions. Now, what makes me a qualified recruiter in order for you to ask me questions? So, um, and at this time, at this stage, actually, thank you for all those who have already reached out to me on LinkedIn and uh, sent a re um, connection request. I, I really appreciate that. So happy to connect with all of you. Um, my recruitment career started 15, more than 15 years ago at Michael Page as a recruitment consultant, headhunter, whatever you want to call it. Then I changed to multinational company like Johnson & Johnson to work as an in-house recruiter, then Swiss, which is a bit of a more local company since I've, I'm based here in Switzerland. Then in recruitment process GmbH, I was working specifically as really in active sourcing, so really trying to find very specific profiles, maybe like yours, on LinkedIn, very specifically. And now I'm about to co-found, start a new startup called Candy. that's a mobile recruitment app. And as of January, I'll be launching my own new recruitment agency called Smart Recruiting here in Switzerland. But more of that um, then if we stay connected on LinkedIn. More important for you is to get to know me. So I like humor. So I have to start with a little bit of a, a, a meme, a joke. Maybe you know it. If not, I'm sure you can relate to this frustration. So imagine three phone interviews, two video calls, seven face-to-face -face meetings, or let's say meetings with seven different people. And then after a couple of weeks, the recruiter calls you and tells you, sorry, we're changing the role slightly. And I can tell you, this happens. It has happened to me. And of course, I know why this can happen. And this is why I want to also tell you a little bit about, which is behind the whole recruitment process. Let's say, if you think, if you think of, a, of a mid size or a large company, they always have a very specific or thorough process for recruitment. Um, sometimes even in these six different stages, as I'm describing it here, where first you plan, what are you actually recruiting? Then you post and source for candidates. Then you screen them. Then the selection phase starts. This is the interview process. Then the hire, where there's the negotiation, salary negotiation, etc. And then the onboarding. So it's a very long process where many different stakeholders are involved, like the line manager, maybe the hard management, which is approving whether we can hire or not, maybe also then changing the role, etc. Um, the HR manager may be validating everything. The recruiter, my person then maybe, you know, trying to deal with everything and maybe sometimes even HR admin or HR operations trying to help with maybe the posting or scaling interviews. So many people involved in a very transactional and operational process that includes many steps and therefore, you can expect always delays in every steps, which is one of the reasons why at the end, a recruitment process or time to hire seems to be so long. Now, consider timing, date of posting versus moment of application. Imagine I post today a role and you apply tomorrow. Regardless if I look at your CV tomorrow or not, most probably you will hear from me in what, two or three weeks? Why is that? Because I wait, of course, for all other applications to come in order to compare. Even, even for a rejection, I may wait that long. Because even then, even if I start interviewing then with other candidates, I still think you could maybe be still an option if none of the interviewed candidates will succeed. So there are different reasons why sometimes this really gets extended. Now, I'm not telling, I'm not saying that this is good or this is the right way to do it it's just the way that it sometimes is right and as you see in the graphic on the right side it's not a linear process unfortunately it's a very complex cumbersome process okay this is for me just for you to keep at the back of your mind in order to be able to anticipate or even better managing the expectations now let me tell you a bit more about the role of the recruiter and the goals of the recruiter because actually they're very similar to your uh, goals just from a different perspective 
you most likely want to find a job or your dream job. Well, the recruiter wants to find people for the jobs that they're hiring for. So they want to fill every role. And that, ideally, with the best possible candidate, this could be you, maybe. And as fast as possible. This is normal also, this is normally also in your interest, right? Now, the recruiter also wants to please the line manager or also known as the hiring manager. This is sometimes a bit contradictory because maybe the hiring manager is very busy with other day-to-day work activities and takes maybe two, three, four, five, six, seven days to give feedback on the candidates. And the recruiter is in between trying to speed up things, but it's very difficult, right? At the same time, the recruiter is also interested in get a good performance review, which is measured on KPIs, such as time to hire, customer satisfaction, or volume of filled roles. So again, try to think about the recruiter as your friend and your ally, and not somebody that is, you know, against you or your application, right? Now, my really high level main advice to you, again, when it comes to the CV, to the application, your CV needs to have a, a very clear structure and be understandable, be easy to read. I'm reading hundreds of CVs every day. Recruiters typically take between 20 or 40 seconds to read the CV, which is not really reading. It's just, you know. So you need to make sure that there are no questions open from, from looking at the CV and that it really um, gives me what I'm looking for. Now, you don't know exactly what I'm looking for, but you know the job ad. So you can try to use the same keywords, for instance, that you have seen in the job ad in your CV and in a way that it's for me easy to find and to read. That will help our both lives much more easier. Another tip, highlight your achievements. What did you contribute to it? Project management is nice and good, but I would like to also to understand quickly what kind of projects and what was exactly your role in that project, right? Just as an example, okay? Now, when it comes to the interview phase, um, for, for, for advice my end, listen carefully, okay? When the recruiter or whoever is asking a question, listen to the question and give a straight answer to that question. I know that sometimes we feel a little bit under pressure, maybe a bit nervous. We feel like we have to sell ourselves and sometimes we tend to give too much information at once, but you're not doing anything else than actually taking the lead from the recruiter and maybe actually showing not ideal communication skills because it seems that you are not able to listen because you're not just answered that question, but you already answered maybe three, four other questions. So it is a little bit of an uncomfortable situation. Avoid repeating your CV. Imagine that typical question that often comes, please introduce yourself. Typically, and I understand, we just summarize our CV in 90 seconds. You can ask if that's wished. If not, I would rather describe yourself in a way that you can share your added value to that role or to that company and maybe even think about a bit storytelling for those 90 seconds, make it meaningful for me and make it, you know, differentiate yourself from everyone else that might just go through the CV. This is an, an, a moment where you can really differentiate yourself from other candidates, right? And then ask smart and relevant questions. I know that there is pressure that, you know, people think that recruiters expect that there are questions at the end. Yes, it, 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 it is a good impression, but the questions really have to be smart and relevant. In addition, don't call or chase the recruiter or anyone without the reason. If there is something important that you need to share, that you want to share, do it. But um, imagine that the recruiter is handling, I don't know, 30, 35 roles at the same time. For every role, they get between 20 and 100 candidates. Now, you know, sum that up and imagine how many people we are in contact with. It, right so again this is not an excuse this is an explanation right and i'm not saying it's okay but it's how it's uh, often works based on my experience and rejections don't let yourself you know take the courage away don't take it personal when you get the rejection even those rejection after an interview where you maybe hear something like you were a great ca- you were a great candidate but you know you end up number two or somebody else just fit better the job you know what It may be even true. I had so many times that I had to really to give rejections about, listen, you are really a great candidate. It is just that the gut feeling of the line manager who is doing the decision at the end 
you know, went for this other candidate. And how do you want me to explain you that in a way that is not more discouraging or more silly, actually, than it is? So sometimes just take it. If there is, of course, constructive feedback, even better. Um, but if not, don't, don't take it personal, right? And my last advice, try to use LinkedIn as also a support tool for, high, for, for your job search. You know, this is a, a place where you can showcase your branding, have a nice professional picture, use the banner picture to cut the attention, use the About Me section to describe your skills, achievements, qualifications, in order that those keywords for what recruiters or sources might be searching for will appear again. Maybe the volunteering activities, this gives an additional more personal touch and personal feeling. Um, experiences, qualifications, and skills. I think this should be one-to-one -one like your CV. And then, um, of course, you know, the next level, engage by creating, sharing, commenting, and liking content of that field of, of work where you would like to work, right? So this is a little bit in a nutshell my advice. And sorry if it feels like I've rushed through these slides, but I did it on purpose in order to have enough time that we can still maybe handle a couple of questions. Thank you so much, Elena, for a wonderful and, and a very insightful session. We have so many questions. Let me uh, show on the stage one by one. This is the first one. What do you mean by Dutch culture in a company? That's, that's a tricky one because I didn't, I didn't say Dutch culture um because i'm not dutch and i'm not um i'm not based in in netherlands right i'm based in switzerland um let's say from a from a more you know global or regional point of view um i think what needs to be considered is i would say not really if it's a swiss or a dutch company or a dutch culture or a swiss culture rather how open their culture is how international you know is their business also do they export do they import do they have um, you know, business affairs with other countries or with other regions, because this will tell me they are rather open for um, different cultures, for a diverse culture, uh, you know, for a diverse workforce, etc. And this is where I would like to work myself as well. Um, so yeah, this is what I can I can comment on this. Okay, the next question is, uh, what are the be best ways to follow up on a job application? It, this is a good one, right? Because often um, you don't even have any contact details because, you know, you apply through a online system and sometimes there is no even contact details. So unless you have the contact details, of course, you know, you can, you can, you can, you can reach out to that person. That's why they would share the contact details. And if not, I would still, you know, I would use LinkedIn. I would try to, you know, to search for someone in that company that works in that field of the role or that works in HR or recruitment, and, and just be very respectful, polite, conscious of their time as well, and just kindly ask, by the way, are you involved with this recruitment process? I am very interested and wanted just to know, you know what the process looks like, um, and I'm looking forward to hear more, for instance. Just you know, very, very, very respectful, because of course, you know, maybe you reach to somebody who is in fact not involved, even if they're involved, they might be busy with a lot of things, but I think it's totally okay to do that. And even more important, if there was a specific interaction or connection with someone of that company, whether it's the recruiter, the line manager, whatever, in that interaction, always um, ask for a timeline. Always ask, okay, thank you. When will I hear back from you? Or can I expect to hear back from you in one or two weeks? Because if you have that information, that, again, gives you permission to then go back again rather than, you know, not knowing, shall I approach them, shall I not? And then you feel maybe that you're pushing, etc. It may even come across as pushing depending on how much you wait. But if you have already clarified in that one interaction or one meeting or one interview, when is the timeline to expect, then you can build that. And then I think it's totally okay and totally polite to go back, right? Thank you so much, Rana, for answering that. Let us have one more question. That is, uh, most important qualities you are looking for in person for any type of role. 
this is this is a, again a tough one because it depends of the role. It depends also of I would say even a little bit the culture of the company because I've seen from roles where if you don't have one to one the I don't know three four five key requirements, then there is no point in uh, in 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 replying. This can be very technical roles. This can be very you know maybe very transactional and operational roles where you need that specific technical expertise. But if you think of more broader roles, project management, transformation um, projects, business development, commercial roles, um, like I said already, project management roles, management roles even, sometimes the profile is a bit wider and it can be a combination of different experience it can be industry experience it can be function related experience it can be technical experience it can be soft skills that actually in the end will make up the perfect um, candidate now imagine how difficult is that to explain in a job advertisement right so i think it, it really depends on the role and on the company itself on what they would really focus because i also think that and this is the interesting part when it comes to the interviews is that some companies will not necessarily assess your current skills, may focus more on your learning skills or your potential because they know what you can do now, but it's also very relevant what you can do maybe in two or three or four years because you know every business wants to progress and develop and ideally the people will develop there. So I think the more modern companies will even look into really what what um what is your potential to grow in the role or with the company okay we are because of the time constraint we are just uh taking one last question that is here on your screen how the rejects how can i encourage myself to customize my cv for every job um i I know it's 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 a hard work, right? And I'm not I'm really not not uh, happy with. Let's say it's it's not an eye to eye process right now, right? The people expect a lot from the candidates, a lot of work. I, I like that you're saying that you customize your CV from every job because that is my advice myself as well because it fits better. It or it, may, it should increase your your chances actually. Um, but then again, on the other side, the the employers they just you know click one button and you're out, right? So it's not fair. I totally agree. It's super not fair. I'm with you on that. I think you need to maybe rethink your whole overall strategy. Um, maybe the customizing the C is not the problem. Um, maybe there is something else not um, coming across in the way that it should from the overall application documentation or from the CV itself. Maybe even if, you know, I don't have now enough information to judge on this, but maybe maybe you are targeting the wrong roles for whatever reasons. Um, and the people on the other side are not understanding what you're bringing. And again, we only have those two or three pages of the CV in order to make that understandable. So... I understand is is really very difficult, and the only thing I can I can I can tell you, uh, Jovan, and and all the other people here in in the audience is you know feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, and of course I'm I'm more than happy to continue the conversation just in order to manage your expectations. Again, I'm not hiring; I cannot offer any jobs. I can, but I can definitely offer any. Um, Let's say advice. If 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 somebody wishes that advice, then I'm happy to give that. Thank you so much, Rene. Still, there are so many unanswered questions, but we cannot take it. You guys are free to reach Rene on LinkedIn, and uh, uh, thank you so much for Rene for wonderful session, and thank you so much for answering all the questions. Sure. We I have put to quickly my, my I, quick, I put quickly my LinkedIn on on. That. Sorry, yes. I should have done that. Um, just that so one has seen it if you have not found me already. There you go. Okay. Awesome. Thank so, you very much. Thank you. We are end uh, ending the session now. You are free to join another session, which is live. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.